Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokta. In a few months' time, in September, we will celebrate Malaysia Day. But we are a country that is disunited by many decades of the policies practiced under the maladministration of former AMNO Baru and BN regimes. Both the East Malaysian states of Sabah and Sarawak are blessed with natural resources like oil, gas and timber. The people should enjoy good education, healthcare, transport links and a high standard of living. But Sabahans are the poorest people in Malaysia, whilst the Sarawakians are the second poorest. So where did the money from the hydro hydrocarbon reserves go? How was this money spent? Was it mismanaged? Has the black hole of corruption sucked in most of the money meant for the rakyat? If there were insufficient funds to improve the lives of the East Malaysians, why did the leaders of Sabah and Sarawak not ask for an increase in their annual budget? Sarawak, Sabah and Malaya formed Malaysia around 60 years ago. Sarawak and Sabah are treated as states and are not on equal terms with Peninsula Malaysia. Sabah and Sarawak are not states. Sabah and Sarawak are being bullied and robbed through Putrajaya's abuse of power. Are the people of East Malaysia so disunited and absorbed by the internecine wars that they have little time or energy to bring their leaders to account. Sarawak exports billions of ringgits of hydrocarbons. Why is only 5% of the oil royalty given to Sarawak? What has the chief minister of Sarawak done with the money allocated for the rakyat? The erstwhile chief minister, who is now the governor of Sarawak, has seen his wealth grow exponentially but few of the rakyat have seen any dramatic changes in their daily lifestyles. The revenue from timber has benefited a few cronies. The jungles were cleared of mature trees and the timber barons saw their bank balances grow. And after the timber was exported, the land was cleared to cultivate only one crop, oil palm. This set in motion the next cycle of money-making, oil palm plantations. And with no trees or vegetation, the future and lifestyle of the indigenous people became under a real threat. The various tribes survive in the jungle by harvesting the crops and hunting the animals which live in them. But once the rich diversity of plant life had been destroyed, the animals were forced to migrate deeper into the jungle to seek food and shelter. Animals like deer, uh, wild boar, monkeys. Plantations don't just harm the culture and livelihood of the tribes, they also harm the future survival of the plant life and animals which once coexisted in the jungle. Some people claim that Ecotourism will provide employment to some of the displaced tribes. But others are furious because hordes of tourists who enter the villages to see how the people live are turning the villages into human zoos. It is quite degrading. A few politicians tell the displaced tribes that they should increase their income by making woven mats or selling basketry made from rattan. How do these politicians expect the indigenous people to source the vines, the rattan vines? Because oil palm has replaced the vegetation and the people have to travel several miles inland to find the rattan. The rattan goods are sold more often than not for a pittance, despite the high transportation costs and painstaking effort to make the baskets. Uh, according to the 2010 national census, the religious composition of Sarawak is, I think, 43% Christian, 32% Muslim and 14% Buddhist. 
The racial composition is Iban, 31%, Chinese, 28%, Malay, 20%, Melanao, 6%, Bidayu, 8%, and Orang Ulu is 5%. Many Malaysians realise that Sarawak is the most racially harmoni harmonious country within the nation. The many indigenous populations exist in peaceful coexistence. Families have members of different faiths. In Sarawak, you will find a stall selling bakute, which may nestle beside a Malay stall selling halal food, and nobody bats an eyelid. In Sarawak, an open house is a true open house where no special cutlery or crockery has to, has to be bought, especially for Muslim guests. And in Sarawak, people have no qualms about visiting a longhouse or a house which celebrates Gawai or Christmas. Peninsula Malaysians have much to learn from their Sarawak cousins about harmony and inclusivity. Malaysians know only too well that the policies of the previous Amnu Baru and BN government from Peninsula Malaysia have little to offer except divisive politics based on race and religion. Sarawak is the only nation within the Tripartite Malaysian Alliance which practices one Malaysia on a daily basis. I should add Sabah too. Let us learn from Sarawak the land of the hornbills. Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.